Hello everyone, how are you? We're finally doing this video, finally. I got a lot of responses on the first one. I know you liked them, but I've been lazy. First one, what is dependency injection? Someone asks you this on the street. What do you say, you know? I would be careful if you were to mention the solid principles in your resume and then you come to this question and then they ask you what is dependency injection well the answer is dependency injection is a design pattern to implement the inversion of control principle the i in the solid principles and it's used to resolve dependencies right this is the simple answer very surfacey but it uh, shows that you know the solid principles, you know what inversion of control is, whatever that is. But the keyword, right? They like the keywords. So the more advanced answer would be dependency injection is a subtype of inversion of control. It's one way of doing it. And it's implemented by constructor injection or method injection. And it deals with how components get hold of their dependencies. That is what dependency injection is. Very good answer. Shows that you know. Shows that you're not uh, just throwing around words. Never thought what they mean. Good answer. All right. Follow up question to the first one. Can you name a few dependency injection libraries for Android? How do they differ? Hmm. So first of all, there's Dagger, Hilt, Butter Knife, Coin. And you could say something like, list goes on and on or you could say something like there are many others i'm sure but these are ones i used throughout the years so dagger and hilt and butter knife are actually compile time based so before you compile it checks if your dependency graph which is already constructed by this library it checks if it's all satisfied and then you can compile you don't see any runtime errors like you would with coin. Coin uses a DSL to describe the dependency graph. You describe it yourself. It's not built by using compile time annotations. That's the difference between them. <clears throat> I honestly use Hilt. I like Hilt because of the power of Dagger. And Hilt makes it easier to use Dagger. That's what I understood from it. Beyond this, no one will go deeper into this question that I know of. I don't think anybody would go deeper. Why? You know, I'm sure there's many people who know much deeper stuff than this, but I'm asking about what to ask during an interview. I don't think anybody would go deeper than this, right? What's the next question? This is number two. Those were sub questions. Can you mention some types of testing that you know? Hmm, I can. There's UI tests, there's unit tests, and there's integration tests. We all know that. So what about UI tests? Well, they involve user interaction, meaning you are testing if a button does trigger this function to be called when I click it. They verify this behavior. Is clicked, is uh, run, or is uh, displayed, is not displayed. This is what they deal with, the interaction or the behavior of the element you're working with. Unit tests, for example, they're based on the JUnit framework. They also verify behavior of classes, actual code, not the UI stuff, whether it's displayed or not, or whatever, coming up or down or pressing, going left and right. They test the behavior of your classes. Is your method doing or outputting what it said it would output based on this new input? Integration tests, I have no idea. I have never written any integration tests. I'm not sure what they are even. This is what I would answer. <laughs> I would show myself, my behavior, my, my uh, level of experience. I would put it out there as it is. I have nothing to lose except the job, of course. But besides that, I have nothing to lose. I don't know what an integration test is. I've never written an Android integration test. If you have, I'd love to know. Tell me about it. During the interview, I would say this. Who cares, bro? 
They're taking my time. They're taking one and a half hour of my time. I have the right to say whatever I, I like, you know. Granted that uh, within the bounds of uh, respect, right? <laughs> so I have no idea what an integration test in the terms of Android means. I don't know. And that's what I would say. Moving on. Do you have experience with Lint? What is it used for? Okay. So Lint scans code, provides you with a report, which includes issues with your code style. Okay. There's a linter inside Android Studio already. And it runs as you're writing code. Okay. It suggests to you that this Lambda should be out of the parentheses if it's the last parameter to a, if it's the last argument to a function or something. It goes like a yellow squiggly line. That's the linter. You can have this, this is the advanced answer, that you can have a linter standalone, KT lint, right? You can include it into continuous integration. You can have this linter be run from some server and it has to run your code under these rules while it's on the server, right? And you use KT lint to do that. So KT lint is a standalone linter can be run on the code, on your code from the command line at the CI server. It runs your code through the linter, produces an APK, and that's how continuous integration, uh, that's what it does, right? So this is your follow-up question. What do you mean by the last sentence can be integrated into continuous integration server? What do you mean exactly? How? Like this, using KT lint. Again, deeper than this, I don't think anybody will go. They will just say, okay, noted, cool. And that's what we use uh, in my company. In an instrumentation test case, what are the two most important methods? It's a cool question, but it's easy. So there's the setup method and there's the teardown method. Those are the two most important test uh, functions, right? The setup method runs for initialization. So it injects whatever the hell you want to inject. It initializes stuff. It prepares the environment to tell the test, for example, there's no internet. So it says, whenever you call my view model and you uh, call is connected, I want you to return false. So the environment for your test now is that there is no internet because some of your code inside your test is going to call this method before executing some other code. So you're testing some other code, but you're going to go have, you're going to have to go through, is there internet? So your test says, whenever you call this return false. So that other code you're testing is going to be running under the pretense that there is no internet, right? So this is done in the setup before you do anything. The teardown resets the environment for the test back to zero. Now it's not false anymore, right? So this is the simple answer. There's a follow-up question to this one. In what order do these methods run? The two important ones, setup and teardown. So setup is always called before each individual test is passed, always. If we were to say, let's run two tests, right? This would be the execution. You would first call the constructor, then you would call the setup, then the test, then the teardown. In the case of the next test, no constructor is called, just the setup, then the actual test, and then the teardown, right? This would give you amazing points. You would be so, uh, someone huge. No, it's normal, but this is cool. If you were to answer that, it shows that you really know. Cool, cool. This is another cool one. But I would first ask the candidate, for example, uh, have you ever worked with coroutines? If not, I wouldn't proceed, right? Because I d really don't want to put the person under the spot and, and have them uh, explain this, uh, or, or, or I would say this huge uh, 
a question and then they go, honestly, I've never worked with coroutines, so I can't even answer this. No, I just say, have you worked with coroutines before? Yes, yes, I would continue. No, no, I would move on to something else. This is the last question. What can you say about the relationship between coroutines and threads? Hmm. Coroutines are very similar to threads. However, coroutines are cooperatively multitask, whereas threads are typically preemptively multitask. Do not answer this at all. This is an answer from Wikipedia. Do not talk like this, because if you do, somebody's going to say, what do you mean by typically preemptively multitasked? Please, could you explain to me what does this word mean? And this is where you will be embarrassed and you won't know what to say, right? So don't bring yourself into such a situation where you're parroting or you're repeating someone else's words. Try to understand the thing in a more simple way, right? This is the simpler way. This is the, in my opinion, the first one, it is from Wikipedia. It could be the right answer. I don't understand it. I'm not going to use it. And I don't agree with this kind of talking. This is the way I would prefer. Coroutines are not threads. First of all, they are not threads. Here it mentions coroutines are very similar to threads. Similar how? Are they threads themselves? No. Then how are you saying they're very similar? They're another thing, they're a different thing. But the relationship with the threads is as follows. Coroutines are not threads. They are a low level mechanism or way that uses thread pools to shuffle work between multiple existing threads. So there's a thread pool which you are allowed access to when you're using your machine. Coroutines are a way to shuffle work between the threads in this pool so that they could do the work for you, right? And the proof of this is that you can create a million coroutines and launch them all in your code. Trying to do that with threads is going to crash even the most advanced machine right now. So this is the difference. And that's the last question. If you like this, tell me, I'll make more of them because these are honestly from what I ask personally when I'm doing an interview and from what I've sourced on the internet and found useful. If you like them, I will do more and it will take me three years to do another video like this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll make more. Yeah. Tell me if you like them. See you in the next one. Good luck.